Take care, everyone. Take care. Hello, Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good evening. Whatever time you are watching this, it's morning for me right now. Also, the time of at the time of recording, it's the International Day of Peace. So, um, peace to everyone. Um, we are here today. Um, at the Yogananda Awake podcast, minute 25. We have the usual two suspects here, Priyank and Chris. Um, how are you guys doing today? How's the weather in Brazil, Chris? 35 degrees and hot as normal. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, I'm great, I'm great, thank you. It was, it was so hot that when Chris logged in, he didn't know whose video was on and he was almost completely naked. <laughs> I, I, listen, as an Irishman in Brazil, oh, man. You, have to, you have to take certain measures to try to stay cool. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad we don't have this on camera now. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, 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 it's kind and, of friendly. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's true. And today we'll, we have a special guest. We have Mohit on today. How are you doing today, Mohit? Hi. Uh, thank you, Mike. Thank you so much. I am very well. It's also a very sunny day here in, in UK today. I'm based oh, out, in, out of Leicester and it is mm -hmm. a beautiful sunny day so far. And the day has nice. been good so far. Yeah, I guess and the sun is more appreciated in the UK than in Brazil. Yeah, yeah. sun is more. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you totally. <laughs> <laughs> and especially Fantastic. when winters are about to come, the mm -hmm. sun, last few glimpses of sun, are most mm -hmm. adorable to me. You're well versed already. Yes. You're well versed already to the to the UK weather. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so of course, uh, Mohit is a dear friend of mine from the London Center, and we we all uh, met, uh, met him there. But Mohit, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? About let's start with how you found Guruji in your life. Okay. How I found Guruji is a very unique story because mm -hmm. during my childhood days, I used to visit uh, a temples nearby my home and being born in a Hindu family, uh, my grandmother used to take me to various temples and uh, she would always wanted me to follow some sort of a rituals that every Hindu religion people follow. Uh, but somehow from my childhood days, uh, I was very clear that I do not have to follow the guru that my grandmother used to follow. And we used to go to temple, but I was very, very clear that, okay, he cannot be my guru. And then I grew up uh, a few years in my life or more. And uh, I was in my college days when I spoke to my dad about uh, Guruji because I saw him meditating. I said, who is he? Whom do you meditate? What is the, what exactly you do? You, you, I just see you with closed eyes all the time. And uh, so he just says, I said, but I don't feel like doing meditation. I don't feel like, uh, I, I have no interest in meditation by that time i was in college i said i'm i'm all interested in bikes cars <laughs> and then fancy fancy things <laughs> and he said he just gifted me a book on my birthday in 2010 on uh, in 2010 or 2011 uh, journey to self realization in fact in 20 in 2009 but then by the time i i completed the book it was 2011 and so I read that book and he said, I still remember uh, this book has all the cars, all the bikes and all the desires that you have from the world can be fulfilled from, from this book. I said, I was very happy. I said, okay, what this book is all about. So I read the book and many of my questions got answered, even those questions which I haven't thought of. That changed my life completely. I was fully happy, felt very powerful during that time that if I follow what has been written in the book, I will get whatever I want. Especially, I still remember the line from Swami Shri Yukteswarji's quote, if you, 
if you like something in the world or something which is not even in the world it shall be created for you i was like okay something which is not in the world if i if i desire and if i do right things uh, it shall be created for me too that's how i came on guruji's path mike nice, which nice. Um, which guru did your father follow or was he a yogananda disciple as well sorry which guru did your father follow or which path did he learn his meditation from so he learned the path uh, from guruji only okay. Uh, okay my grandmother i was referring to mm. she used to uh, follow some other guru okay. uh, a nearby temple uh, temple guru mm. okay very cool so you said it's it's tradition that you always accept uh, the guru of your grandfather is that how it is no 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 it, there is no such tra- there is no such tradition i was quite young and my grandmother wanted me to uh, be spiritual during those days itself ah, okay. and uh, so she was just uh, making me aware of all those hindu customs uh, doing anuman chalisa uh, offering jal to lord shiva and then there was some in charge who who was in the temple wanted to give me some mantra but i used to escape i i used to go, go to temple after the time he sleeps so his sleeping time was around 10:30 so i i i always try to visit to the temple after that time or in the in the late evenings so that <laughs> i don't meet him so i was basically <laughs> trying to escape him <laughs> nice and then i believe you you lived in the in the delhi area right what is it like to to be a yss devotee over there is there many temples do you do you see monks often what is the yeah. experience over there that's one of the blessings in my life i stay in ghaziabad which is close to delhi mike it's like mm-hmm. uh, i would say 30 miles from delhi to ghaziabad mm-hmm. and uh, in fact the noida ashram is just 10 miles from my place mm-hmm. and i have a great opportunity always to meet all the monks uh, in noida ashram monks there are very very loving very caring as i have as i must as they must be in the srf also uh, but i can only share about what i have experienced so my sunday routine used to be uh, normally visit noida ashram around 9:30 in the morning uh, serve children satsang meet some monk and also the in charge of children satsang and do some seva in the ashram serve food in the afternoon then have some chit chat time or just share any personal issues or professional issues with the monk in the afternoon then come back home in the evening with my sister that's how my life was uh, till the time i was in india and it was so awesome so meeting monks was very very easy i would say it was not mm-hmm. that tough because they were always available for us mm-hmm. it's their loving relationship and uh, they have uh, they are al- always keen to serve us as guruji's children so meeting monks was like awesome in my life so far nice yeah i think i think this um sounds a bit like when you when you live near near an ashram in the in the united states as well <clears throat> but it's so nice to have that in in um in india um then the the next thing i want to ask you is um since we are talking about the awake movie do you still remember when we when you watched the movie for the first time and what you thought about it after you watched it the first time okay the my first time uh, of awake movie i i was a volunteer uh, when the movie screening was going on so i haven't seen a movie properly i remember that day it was in one of the theaters in delhi and uh, i was in charge to ensure outside the theater only my my duty was outside the theater and uh, my duty was to ensure that all those who are visiting that theater should be able to board their seats on time there should not be any loud noise outside the area and uh, helping people around it and i remember if i'm allowed to take name of any monk i don't know yeah uh, yeah. yeah okay 
So I was, it was Swami Ishwarananji. I was standing outside. Uh, he was also standing outside. He was, he was just paying a visit inside for a while and then come out and see who all are coming. He was like serving most, most of the time people, those who are coming because we have invited so many non YSS guests also for the screening, like diplomats and uh, some uh, people from various embassies and some top notch people. So people were visiting and it was Swamiji's responsibility to ensure that they get their seat, they they are being escorted properly. But yes, I had a few glimpses of the movie at the end when everybody has boarded the seat and when we were told, now you can go inside and uh, watch a movie, <laughs> whatever is the left. <laughs> that was my I... first time I saw Awake. But whatever glimpses we have seen during that time, it uh, it was quite profound, I would say. Seeing Guruji on screen, even serving there outside uh, was like today, there was a special feeling in my heart that day. Even if I'm not in the theater, I'm not able to see Guruji on theater, but there was a beautiful feeling Guruji was giving each one of us, those who were serving outside the theater. And we all experienced that. Even monks blessed us at the end of the uh, end of the movie. They all blessed us, gave us prasad. Then I had an opportunity to have a prasad with all the monks because there was a gathering after the movie ended. Uh, there was some refreshments. We had it together. Then we came back home. That was a beautiful day. Uh, there was some special vibration since afternoon. I still remember I went out with one of the devotee Aruna Deva and uh, she and I and few other devotees we were driving from our office to that place where the screening was happening mm -hmm. so uh, the there was a vibration there was a super vibration I would say fantastic um, <clears throat> I think that is that is what um one of the best ways to see it. I mean, you were also serving, which is great. Um, I also seeing it in a in a movie theater is like immerses you more than when you watch it at home. I would say it depends on your home cinema setup. But <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, let's uh, start talking about the minute. It's minute twenty five, and where we left off last time was Gurji walked through this um, busy bazaar type area. And then he kind of glimpsed Sri Yukteswar to his right and he walked on, but he couldn't, his, his feet, they were not moving anymore. So he walked back and now he's finally seeing Sri Yukteswar for the first time. And we said that last time, this is one of the most special moments I would say in the movie and also in the autobiography of a yogi where he finally meets his guru. Um, and then Sri Yukteswar, according to the autobiography of a yogi, he says, oh, my own, you have come to me. Um, he, and he says this over and over and over again, a very special moment. Priyank, what do you think about that? Yeah, those words are just so, so powerful. I mean, my own, my own. Um... It evokes so much beautiful emotion to, to have someone call you my own, isn't it? And especially someone with the divine stature as Sri Yukteswar. Can you imagine him saying such beautiful words to you? And um, yeah, that just, and I'm, I'm surprised they didn't use those words, um, perhaps, perhaps um, justifiably, but they didn't use those words in the, um, in the film. Like they didn't have Sri Yukteswar saying those words to him, the actor Sri Yukteswar to Mukunda, who was bowing before him, he didn't say that. So perhaps that's probably why they did that, because it, it's all, the, all of us devotees have such a strong connection with that moment. They had to like distill it or change it a little bit so it doesn't alter what our experience of that moment is. I think you touched on it, Priyank, there from what I was, what struck me as well was the immediate longing to belong, essentially, and, and Sri Yukteswar is, you know, a, a clear reflection of, of God and wisdom 
and <clears throat> that reflection made maybe made me think that we all have that um desire to belong and to to be united and i suppose that's you know the definition of yoga to to unite with with god and that's a longing somewhere deep within all of us you know it's it's uh um to hear the words i think it immediately strikes that chord like oh right okay yeah that's that's what we're here to do to to be reunited and like you said Priyank, to hear those words would have been really special and um it's interesting actually uh, on that note because uh, Guruji actually says to Sri Yukteswar later in life, like, I need to hear you say that you love me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, for, for, for these to be his first good. words, yeah, for these to be his first words um, would, would, have been, would have been awesome for, for him. <laughs> and it's obviously <laughs> lovely for us. Fantastic. Mohit, what did you think, like, when you read the autobiography or when you watched the movie? Um, and you, this, this, I feel like both of them, they build up to this moment where, where he finally meets Sri Yukteswar, especially the autobiography of a yogi builds up to this moment because he says he saw him in visions. And, and then what, what kind of emotions did that make you feel when, you, when that moment finally was described? I think that can be the most beautiful moment for anyone in their life. Because if they have visions, if they have sort of a calling and uh, inside that uh, I, there is somebody who, whom they are supposed to meet. And uh, if you are able to recognize them and your whole mind, body and soul just gets uh, towards them, uh, there cannot be anything beyond that. That's the moment you have been looking for. And I think that's what Guruji have felt. And we all have felt in some way when we met our Guru. Or maybe our feet would not have got uh, uh, stick to the ground. Uh, <laughs> but we, I still remember the way monks welcome us to the Ranchi Ashram during Sangam. Welcome back home is what is the calling, like Swamiji's are saying, welcome back to the Guruji's ashram, which is our, our home. And same way Guruji would have felt when he might have met Swami Sri Yukteswarji. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I, I always hear that from devotees often um, that they find, at least they call it their spiritual home, when it's like the center or the temple that they go to. And there is um, definitely something each time when you go there, this vibration, this kind of makes you feel um, at home. And also those, um, those words that Jyuk Teshwar said, my own, you have come. This is um, very emotional. Um, I don't want to start crying now. So let's move on to something before you uh, go, um, brother, um, brother, I, you go on. Yeah. Now, I, I, I wanted to touch on something that you said earlier, Priyank. Um, mm. And that's the thing with, um, they didn't say, they didn't make him say the words um, in the film. They didn't make him say any words, right? So they, they reenacted the scene. Um, also Yogananda, they reenacted him and Sri Yukteswar. Neither of them say anything in the movie. They narrate over it. Um, with Anupam Kher's voice. The one thing he does say is, I've been waiting for you, which is a paraphrasal of what happens in the autobiography of a yogi. Uh, okay. slight, slight difference. So that is the one line that, that uh, they... But, but does he actually kind of, say it? Or yeah, is it yeah, it says that's in, the film. that's in the film. So he, really? he doesn't okay. say it, it's narrated over. It's narrated over, yeah. right? Yeah, right. Yeah, so I, f I feel like th they chose this style because they, they didn't really want to reenact Guruji yeah. and, and Sri Yukteswar. So they did it in this way where they just, you see the people walking um, and, um, but, you, but they narrate over it in a way to keep, to keep it somehow, I would say, I don't know, pure. Yeah. Um, 
Really true. Is it? And I'm so glad we worked this out because I hadn't thought about this before. And when, when I remember before, I was like, this is such a special moment in the autobiography. Why didn't they use the exact words? But working this out now, it kind of makes sense. It does make it fully makes sense, isn't it? This is probably the best way to do it, to keep the purity of the moment, as you just said. But in, in, in reference to the my own thing, I remember Brother and Underboy uh, in one of his talk, he said... Um, he kind of led up to this lovely moment and he was saying Yogananda said these words to someone which was um you you are my own and then he also said I am your own which is the the second part of that which kind of completes completes it doesn't it completes it mm-hmm. yeah Yogananda talks about this himself doesn't he in prayers and chants talking about God, you know, God and I, I, I'm one, uh, I am the son, and, um, you know, you and I are one. Uh, so, yeah, this, this unity is obviously a, a strong theme. There's also this chant, right? I surrender to thee, I am thine, thou art mine. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very beautiful chant that just came to mind. <laughs> um, and then you, in, in the movie, it continues, so now they... Um, it, first, it looks like they were going to hug because Sri Yukteswar, he opens his arms, right? And then Guruji bows before him, which is um, the, the customary thing to do to a guru in India. You touch his feet, you bow before him. And um, uh, Sri Yukteswar, is very, he's, he's also very happy because this, this is not just um, that... Uh, Mukunda had those visions over and over again. I think Sri Yukteswar had the same. Sri Yukteswar said he has been waiting for, what are the words? Um, how many years I have waited for you. So he must have also had visions of him and he knew that he would come, he would become his beloved disciple. Um, and they will have uh, like 10 years together now in at Sri Yukteswar's hermitage. Um, which is some of my favorite stories in the, in the autobiography of a yogi. Um, very nice. And then you see them together walking hand in hand, uh, walking down this lane, walking towards the Ganges. And I just want to ask that because uh, this is a theme that keeps reoccurring. Like, like um, Master and I woke up early and walked by the Ganges or we walked by the Ganges in the evening. And what is the significance of that? Is there like a special meaning or is it just this privilege of spending time with your guru? What do you think, Chris? Well, the the Ganges, um, you know, I think Mohit and, and Priyanka are probably better better place to talk about it than I, uh, it is, is, uh, has spiritual significance. Um, the waters um, uh, to, to the people of, of the area and to India. Um, I'll, I'll not say anything more and let the, let the guys jump in on that. Um, but, um, Certainly, certainly, um, there there is going to be an element of simple exercise as well. You know, not to, not to get too mundane about it, but you know, they, they do need to get out. Yogananda talks about strengthening the body uh, and the mind. So you know, getting out for walks, uh, I think, is important. That he talks about being in the sun and you know, get it, getting getting fresh air, sort of thing. Um, so not not to uh, take away the the spiritual significance of of the moments with the guru, but uh, I, I certainly think that there's a practical element of simply being out and about. But really, the the moments of him and his and his guru Sri Yukteswarji uh, getting up by the Ganges are, I think, moments of silence a lot of the time. I'm not sure exactly how many words were shared in uh, in, in these walks, but I think it was more peace and tranquility, sharing moments together simply being in each other's presence as two great spiritual beings would have been would have been awesome to, to see uh, personally but I'll, I'll leave i'll leave the more ganges comments to, to the to the guys maybe that know more what what do you think priyang if you were with guruji and he would ask you to walk by the ganges with him oh gosh i think i would die there and then <laughs> i can't even contemplate i cannot contemplate but um yeah it's, it's a beautiful um setting but i think they they portrayed this uh, i think i mentioned in the last minute they portrayed this moment 
really, really powerfully and beautifully. It, it, if anything, it, as I said before, it bolstered my, my like, you know, my impression of that beautiful moment because now there's like scenery, and um, obviously they were near near the Ganges, weren't they? So, yeah, more Mohit can because I haven't yet I haven't yet dipped into the Ganges. Mohit, I'm sure has. Okay, yeah, yeah. or the Yamuna I... River or what is ever <laughs> close. Yeah. Not the Yamuna River, but uh, but to the Ganges, I would say I've walked around the Ganges. Uh, so do I have to talk about if? Guruji and I have an opportunity to walk, walk please, together. Please, please, please. <laughs> yeah, why would not? You, I, would 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 you you his hand. I would just hold his hand and say, okay, let's, Guruji, let's go there. Let's walk. <laughs> I would not, uh, I would not feel shy, nor I would have any emotion. I said, let's go. Let's go. Wow. And uh, because uh, walking by the Ganges, I've experienced that many, many times in my life so far. Uh, Haridwar is very close to my home and uh, it's one of the holiest land I would say one of the holiest uh, on in on the on the land of India one of the places and uh, Ganges looks so beautiful there it comes all over from uphill definitely up to rich it goes it starts from uh, Dev Prayag, where I've seen where Ganges and Alaknanda and one more river, they meet and they form the Ganges. So I've seen, I've taken a holy dip there. And then it comes down to Haridwar. I mean, it comes down to Rishikesh and then, then, and then to Haridwar. So I have seen from the top to that area. So I am in totally love with the Ganges. And if I have an opportunity to walk with you there, <laughs> yes. And yes, definitely there's, as Chris was mentioning, if you remember that uh, being the being born in India, definitely we know the significance of Ganges and, uh, and the spiritual aspect what I have learned from Swamiji's and some other people about uh, Ganges is the current that flows in the Ganges uh, from top to where the Ganges actually starts to the down and to the when it merges to the sea is like a is like a current that flows in our spine from top to down so all we have to do is the reverse it mm. so we are going down until we are conscious we cannot hold those currents so we need we whether we want or we do not want we are flowing downward and that's what guruji also says that energy flows downward and outward and with the practice of a kriya you take it inward and upward mm -hmm. So both have uh, both have a same significance. Beautiful. And do you ride? Do you do you ride the? Do you? So is it then better to sail up the Ganges or submerge and swim up the Ganges? So it's always so. It's not uh, not down the Ganges. It's always. I mean, thus, uh, I would say the example that I've heard in the satsang is naturally we are flowing downward. Mm -hmm. We are flowing away from our source, which is the starting of the Ganges. And everybody has to make an effort to go uphill. And that's a goal. That's an offer. That, that is what we are here for. So if you do not make an effort uh, to go up, you will naturally go down. You cannot stand still. That's, that's the reason. Even if we are not able to do our spiritual practices to the extent we want to, but even if we are doing some part of it, we are able to, we are not going backward. We are stand st We are able to stand still a bit. We know we can pull back. But if we just sometimes, uh, when we do not do anything, then that's the time is the toughest time. And we can, we can be carried away. Mm. Beautiful and that you basically have your whole country as, an, as a representation of the, uh, the currents that flow in the spine. Very, very nice. It starts in the Himalayan mountains. Yeah, it is. Um, I had the privilege one time to go to Rishikesh and to Hardwar and then also Kolkata. And then if you compare in Rishikesh, it's like this mountain stream that flows super fast and is super clear. And then the Huli River in Kolkata is like this 
massive. It looks like the ocean almost. It's so big. Yeah, more like the majestic stream. Um, in that scene where they so they walk by the uh, by the Ganges um, or towards the water somewhere, and then they sit under a, a banyan tree. And um, Priyank, you said that had significance. Do you want to add something to that? Yeah, so it's um, it's referred to in the Gita as well, but the chapter fifteen, verse one. I was just reading it actually, but in that they actually refer to it as the um, the Ashvata tree, where the where the roots are above and the boughs beneath. Um, the leaves are Vedic hymns, and he who stands under this tree of life is the Veda Noah. So if you look at this tree, it's a very common tree in India, and actually it's so big sometimes you can have like pretty much a whole forest, and it's actually all interconnected bunion trees and you'll see like the roots kind of come down into the ground and it's a very majestic uh, majestic tree and I'm sure Mohit's uh, also been in and around these trees but it's also very uh, spiritually there's lots of uh, stories with reference to sages you know sitting underneath these these majestic trees and meditating under these trees and Krishna as well obviously is associated with them um, with this tree. Nice. Do you do you have any any experiences with, with banyan trees in India, Mohit? Yes, I I have been I have a privilege to visit Sirampur once, and uh, that time I don't know it it was the same tree where Babaji met Swami Sri Yukteswarji or not, but there is a, a picture of Babaji and Swami Sri Yukteswarji in one of the banyan trees in near Sirampur. So when we, we visited uh, Swami Shri Yukteswarji's home, and then somebody took us to that place that they must have met under this banyan tree, which has been mentioned. Mm -hmm. It looks fantastic. Like I, I don't think I've seen one consciously, but it looks like a, a giant mushroom. Yeah. And then, so you sit under it, and that gives a lot of shade. I guess that makes it popular as well in the in in mm -hmm. the hot climate in India. And then it has like that's something that looks like strings hanging down from its branches is that is that um um something that um gives extra extra protection or is that is that those, those, something those are actually roots so the roots this is why this tree ah. is so it's, it's like an inverted thing so the roots come down from the top and they go ah. into the ground so it's very it's a very metaphorical um and that's why they use it in scripture and various things to, to describe that and the relationship. Of so, the so, the, so those roots go into the ground then? And... Yeah, yeah. And that's why wow. then the tree can spread. And you would have actually, when you were in India, you would have walked past probably hundreds of these trees and you wouldn't have, uh, you might have noticed the first one, but then you'll see so many that you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have mm -hmm. thought much about it. They just look like the landscape there. <laughs> I remember one quote, uh, what I have read in the Ranchi Ashram on my first visit to Ranchi Ashram during one of the Sangams in 2011. So Lord Buddha also used to worship under the Banyan tree, mm -hmm. and uh, in that under that tree he he took a vow where he he says that uh, I will sit down here and will not uh, I will. Take my, I will lift my eyes and will not bring it down until I resolve the mystery of life. So something like that. Wow. Quote, quote, yeah, he, he took a vow. He said, I take a sacred vow. I would not let my eyes fall until I resolve the mystery of my life. And he was under the Banyan tree. I'm sure this, it is definitely uh, more than that we know about the Banyan tree. Yeah. Beautiful. I think this is the termination that, that we need, right? The Guru, and Guruji did that a few times. He said, I'm going to meditate now until Divine Mother comes to me. Mm. Won't get up. Yeah. I have this, this test. Yeah. We can try yeah. that in case we are able to resolve it. <laughs> <laughs> we have so something to do with the banyan tree. We are not trying that. We are meditating at home. Yeah, that's the excuses, the right? <laughs> I, I cannot meditate. I need a banyan tree. Now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. Um, 
So then Chris, I think Chris see... had a Chris had a point to make. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, to be fair, I'm still musing at what the point actually is. Uh, to... <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 whenever no, whenever I look at this tree, it looks ancient, right? So there's something talking about the tree, and it, it's um, uh, it, it, there is something as well, just to the points being made um, about the significance uh, of of trees, but whether or not it's maybe super hot climates over in Asia and India, you know, where maybe outdoor uh, shade is very, very welcomed, but um, the grounding effect, maybe in meditation, um, that that it might bring, I'd be very curious to, to know more if there might be, um, uh, let's say, as, assistance that you might, you might get from sitting with, you know, ancient trees of, of sorts. Um, Guruji, you know, talks about using cotton, uh, material to disconnect, um, you know, your yourself from certain earthly vibrations. So, I just wonder, maybe if there's listeners or anybody knows anything about this, uh, what what else there might be hidden, you know, in plain sight. Fantastic. So then, let's move on to the to the next scene, which is actually the same scene. You see them sitting under the banyan tree, but then it gets narrated over. Um, and by this gentleman, I, I can't really pronounce his name well, so I'm not gonna try. I'm, and he says um, that a true guru is someone who doesn't try to lead you to him, but to yourself and to try to reach your potential. Um, uh, what does that mean, Priyank? So firstly, he says a true guru. So there's, guru is often a very, you know, use misused term as we've discussed in the past, um, and and you might have various gurus in your life, but there's only one sad guru. So sad guru is uh, the true, like the true guru, and that is for us. That's um, Yogananda. So uh, the 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 guy who was narrating this is um, Anand Anand Malhotra, and um, yeah, that's that's what he was referring to, and and he was saying. Um, yeah, true. True guru is not one that leads you basically to him. He, he's just there as an agent to lead you to God, as it were, or the ultimate reality or truth or whatever you wish to call the you know the divine experience. And that's so beautiful for me because I, I you know I've met I've met people that don't like to accept a guru's help because they think that the guru is going to take the worship for themselves and take the prayers or you know lead the devotee to him and that's 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 and that and in that the devotee will get lost but as Ayman beautifully says the sadguru that's not what the sadguru does or the sadguru yeah nice chris what do you think about this yeah just uh, i think what Priyank said there was absolutely correct. What really got me thinking more was the limited aspect of us and what we're truly capable of. You know, the the um, points there. We could probably talk, uh, you know, for the rest of the podcast and multiple more episodes on, on what the limitations of what the possibilities might be because they're seemingly endless either either way and. Sri Yukteswar talks about this, doesn't he, in, in the Holy Science, I, I think, and um, maybe in other literature where mm -hmm. this is what separates us from, from the animal kingdom. Um, you know, we, we, are, we are limitless, and if we're made in the image of God, um, then we are truly limitless. Uh, and that is just a, a thought with I can get lost on for, for quite some time, but... Um, it's it's striking uh, to to um, to put this in because um, people who you know I'm I'm thinking about this from the perspective of somebody who might not be too acquainted with yoga or gurus or spiritual aspects. Do you really ask yourself all that often what your limitations might be or or what the possibilities might be of being human? You know, it, it's um, it has been seen as relatively mundane in in some respects. Uh, uh, in the Western world, um, and uh, yeah, it just excites me to think about it. You know, that we 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 are limitless. We we have ultimate potential. Um, and to Guru's point, um, Yogananda's point, the only thing that separates us from from him and what he's achieved is hard work. You know, uh, to to put the work, and he's he's worked harder for it. So 
um, yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I think these are thoughts that pop into my mind. Nice. Um, Mohit, what do you think when you hear um, a true guru and when you hear that um, he leads you to reach your own potential? Yes, Mike, uh, there is 100% truth in this world. And especially we have seen uh, Guruji never wanted anybody to love him. He says, whatever love you offer to me, I give it back to the Divine Mother. And uh, he never told anybody that you follow me. He said, you come and experience. And if you like it, well and good. If you do not like it, you're free to go. So he's not saying anywhere in in any of his talks any of his scriptures any of the literature guruji has written that i'm the one i'm the only one he says there can be many so which shows how humble is he throughout and uh, especially like yukteswar ji has also displayed the same thing when guruji has left uh, his guru's ashram uh, he was free to go, and when he wanted to come back, he was free to come. And similarly, we all have experienced that many times we we or we tried to leave the teachings in some way or the other by not doing it, by not being regular, not 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 by just leaving the teachings, but thinking sometimes a bit different. And then whenever we came back to Guruji, okay, I, I resolved to meditate more sincerely from today onwards. We have felt his love even more deeply mm -hmm. and that shows that okay my child if you wanted to you were not doing whatever you were supposed to do for, for a while but now you're back so i welcome you and i give the same i will give you the same love and i will give your love back to the divine mother that's very beautiful and i think this is also a beautiful segue to the next thing we want to talk about because you are with a guru and the guru helps you but nothing i don't want to actually i don't want to phrase it like this i was going to say nothing comes for free but it is it, it does demand of the disciple to be disciplined and to be, also be disciplined by the guru at times because what he really disciplines is not you but it is your ego and your tendencies and the faster you want to work out your karma, I guess, the more a guru will point out your little things that you have going on that you should work on. Um, and it takes um, a really like true devotee, someone who is really invested to, to like um, in each situation, analyze yourself and say, oh, my guru is telling me something here I I need to work on this rather than oh my guru is mean to me, right? And because it's it's for your own good at the end. And um, we there's many many stories of Guruji receiving uh, getting disciplined by Sri Yukteswar, and also we know many stories of Guruji's disciples um, in SRF and in YSS who who received this and then and then it took them a while to, to get over uh, over their ego. Um, and Masvidal says the same thing. It is like not easy to be taught by a guru. It is because destroying your ego, first you have to figure out that you are not the ego, that you are the soul. Um, and this is um, the, the ultimate way to, to, get, to get free, to get free from the ego. Um, what do you think about this, Priyank? Yeah, definitely. Certainly isn't easy, is it? <laughs> the spiritual path is not one for, is not one for, um, if you just want to just, you know, make no effort in improving yourself and all those things, it's not, that's not for you. Um, but, you know, the, the Yogananda used to say, like, um, an easy life is not a successful life, or is that is that Sri Yukteswar that said that? And that that's so true as well, isn't it? Because we have to 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 improve, we have to 
work on ourselves and when you work on yourself there's always some painful thorns that we have to remove you know to get out to, to to remove a splinter you have to first go through a few pricks of the of the needle and it hurts doesn't it and and then finally when that little splinter is removed you're like oh yes it was worth it was worth the pain um, because uh, otherwise you can't you'll go through your whole life with that splinter and it will never it will never it'll never get removed and perhaps it'll be many lifetimes I, I've got I've got one I've, I've got a splinter that I need to remove. <laughs> but funny, funny you mentioned that actually, Frank. Can you come over and help me? Help me with wow, um, Mike, Chris, yeah. I was like, I was trying to get, I was trying to like set something up really deep, and then you're like, oh, I've got a splinter. <laughs> look, 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 right there, you can see it. Yeah, you, you know, I, I'll I'll uh, I'll lessen the tone here a little bit more with uh, my my reference uh, continued reference to the Lord of the Rings and um, you know I, I love this because and it, and this is one of the reasons why I love I love this movie um, and other similar movies is that if you're willing to to face to go on the adventure and face the dragon uh, and go to, go to battle um, you uh, you ultimately can have the reward of, of the greatest treasure. And it's the treasure of which the dragon so, uh, so, so jealously guards. And the dragon is the ultimate um, predator in a sense, the, the greatest foe that you might be able to uh, go head to head with because it can soar like an eagle, you know, it's got eyes like uh, you can see for miles. It's intellect, uh, very, very clever and very wise. Um, and you know has scales all, all these things it's these analogies are beautiful because this is what we do on the spiritual path we we face uh the the shadow the, the shadow part of ourselves as well as the light and through the guru who uh, brings light and shows us the path you know we can be guided along this treacherous path um but but um but it is uh, something that requires daily work daily discipline um, and it is uh, something that is quite funny when, whenever, you know, if people talk, talk to you about yoga and meditation, they think it's just some like, you know, the, to use the word hippie stuff, you know, to, to sit and have this lay about lazy life. Uh, whereas, you know, from my uh, experience in reality, it is accelerating that uh, karmic uh, path and challenges, more challenges will come to you uh, because you're willing to take them on. And, and you and you will only get the challenges that you're able to to overcome as well with the help of the guru. Um, so yeah, uh, we're we're on this little adventure, and we have uh, the great guru to, to guide us through it. Hmm. Nice. What do you think about this moment? Yes, Mike. Uh, definitely, it's. Uh, I mean. What I think on this is a bit different, I would say, okay? Guruji uh, is helping us throughout and uh, he is definitely challenging our egos and all, all we have to do is have to support him. As Priyank mentioned, that easy life is not a victorious life and uh, we want victory, we want to suffer a bit. We have to sacrifice a bit. We cannot have we cannot have a salvation without without sacrificing anything. And Guruji says you are not if you look at deeply, you are not sacrificing anything. You are just sacrificing the smaller thing for a very higher thing, with a smaller joy to a higher joy. And uh, I remember of one of the examples is where uh, sculptures are trying to create an idol. They hit the they hit the stone. They hit the rock from various corners, and uh, it's painful to go through that that experience. Uh, but uh, once once the idol is ready, it's beautiful, and people worship it. Similarly, in our lives, so Guruji wants to remove all those bad tendencies out of us and uh, 
all those bad habits which are which are stopping us to have salvation but we try to put it back on our shoulders on our everywhere in the body <laughs> so he's trying to remove it we we remove it with an effort for some time we all make an effort sometimes we we remove it but then we get lazy and we bring all those things back and then we says we are not progressing yeah i can uh this is like um the same i feel like it's a similar kind of thing but viewed from a different angle viewed from and i like that a lot it's a beautiful thought to think like all we need to do is we need to support the guru helping us right yeah that's very beautiful um and lastly um we like when we saw guruji and shri yukteswar walking down the street hand in hand um the, there's like a real love between them it is not just i'm your guru you're my disciple they love each other a lot right and um uh, i think chris wanted to talk about the significance of the heart chakra in this respect yeah i i noticed in the shot where they were sitting um you know the actors were sitting as you can and then three fish were under the tree three fish were had his uh, right hand on his on his heart and um you know obviously that's been set up by uh, to some degree i imagine and the significance of the heart chakra is one that is uh, you know it's referenced to in our daily language right we we talk about the heart a lot you know heartfelt and um you know for 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 grief you know we talk about um, being heart stricken and you know, all all these things so um yeah we 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 um we tend to think with our hearts and uh, in the spiritual uh, side of things with the chakras the fourth chakra uh, is it uh, anahata is anahata it, yes. it anahata yeah. chakra um being at the the um kind of sort of center of of our being um and one i've seen an image somewhere uh, this hasn't it wasn't through uh, yoga and his teachings but the the um kind of thyroid shape um of the energy uh, field for our auric field that it actually has its core point in in the heart chakra and and that that was that struck me as very significant as well um and the significance of the heart chakra being one of love uh, forgiveness and the color green there's more hits back on the color green um, <laughs> you know is is uh, is something that uh, i think we could all as a human race uh, work on a lot and i think it has it's very very significant for us in this time um you know as a, as a species but um yeah i just wanted to touch on that and you know blow that topic up and, and if anybody has anything to add to that yeah i do i think in i think the in english they also call it the dorsal or the solar plexuses don't they in in, um, in so that, i think that that refers to that that image of the this yeah the, the 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 i think part of the reason why they portrayed him holding his hand like here it was it was like this so, you know both hands next to the anahata or yukteswar that's what he was doing and there was quite a funny scene in that actually because what happens is you see uh, mukunda kind of come out of meditation because you just you throw through the shrine meditating he comes out of meditation looks up at him and then realizes oh i should be meditating and he comes back into the meditation and it's quite cute but i think the that the significance of the heart chakra in this is because i think this as chris mentioned it is a purely you know it's such a heart for felt relationship and such a heartfelt moment of both of their lives and that's i think that's predominant a uh, feeling in this respect so for example later in the later in the film um later in the book you know through the shrine resurrection and now the the energy isn't about at the start it was about feeling but then it became transcendental right it was describing you know creation and life after death and then you could you could feel the energy has come comes much higher and it was you know it was up probably at the sahasrara or the highest the highest chakra that there is so in this one i think that the, the relationship was very very heartfelt and i think we should uh, if if i may can i just read out some of the lines that about this 
two-way relationship because I think this was a good point you made Chris that uh, it is a two-way thing and the the line between guru and disciple is also blurred and it's also blurred um, uh, deliberately so by Sri Yukteswar so if he says things like um, uh, I give you my unconditional love will you give me the same unconditional love so he's also requesting it and giving it and then then and then he says if ever you find me falling from a state of God realization please prom promise to put my head on your lap and help to bring me back to the cosmic beloved we both worship and I mean that can you imagine uh, you, Yogananda saying such a thing to you. And this 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 effectively what Sukteshwar is saying to his disciple. And so this is uh, this uh, you know Mike mentioned this um about Christ and, and Saint John, you know, the and Elijah. So the, the the relationship for such spiritually elevated beings is is blurred in this respect. So Sukteshwar's plea there is 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 also heartfelt, isn't it? And and that I think that's why it's portrayed in, in that way very humble it's you know and, and humility with wisdom is something that is epitomized in um in, in Sri Yukteswar you know and that's what Yogananda talks about his wisdom uh, and yeah it's it's awesome awesome to hear that really beautiful do we want to add anything more to this point yes I would just say one yes. one or two lines uh, that the importance of heart center or the heart chakra in our okay. sadhana is uh, until we open that, uh, we cannot meet God. Because Guruji says, Kriya plus devotion works like mathematics. So Kriya you can do, but the devotion comes out of heart. So until we do both the things, we cannot meet our beloved to the extent we want it to meet. Uh, that's it, I would say. Beautiful. So this pretty much um, wraps up our minute. Does anyone else have anything to add? Probably. No, uh, Mohit, thank you, very, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you had a beautiful devotional temperament, which you added to this uh, podcast. So we thank you so much. Uh, it's my privilege to be here on this forum and serve <laughs> Guruji in some way mm. uh, because since lockdown we always feel that how can we serve Guruji and I I, I always feel uh, feels that how can I serve my master I don't I'm not like great uh, servants like you all are but yeah <laughs> if I can if I can add a drop in your in your bucket uh, <laughs> it makes me feel happy that's all I can say. Thank you for inviting me rather than thanking me. Great. Jai Guru. It's a pleasure having you on, Mohit. Thank you all. Jai Guru, everyone. Jai Guru. Jai Guru.